I've watched several videos on how to make these forge burners and I decided to make one myself. And it's kind of a, a hodgepodge of what other people did, but it's mainly 3 8 cents pipe thread stuff and a burner with 30 PSI bought from eBay. Some guys take the burner and bring it in from the side, some bring it in from the back. I decided to come in from the back. And also some drill their own holes and some use uh, nozzles for MIG welders. And I decided to go ahead and use the MIG welder tip. If you really want to get saved, we don't have to throw extra water in there. So I just hand file a couple of flat spots opposite each other and that's where the uh, four stainless steel bolts are going to hold it in place. Again guys, this is, this is proof of concept for me to see if I can melt some copper. And I'm just using what I think is going to be the quickest way to get this forge together. So I just drill and tap for quarter 20 and I use stainless steel and just uh, Phillips head screws to hold it in place. I thought this black pipe would go into here but it doesn't. This is um, flare, 3 8 flare and this is uh, national pipe thread. I didn't know what this MIP means but that must be it because this one goes into here so we got that and this side goes into this so now we can make we can make this thing happen all right so let's see what we got here let's, let's start putting this thing together It's just some sealant and it's for gas so this is gas type of sealant and believe it or not there is a direction for Teflon tape do it easiest way I remember it is just like when you you're doing your uh, threading lefty loosey righty tighty so just act like this is the screw you're putting on and then that will be in the correct direction and so now screw that into here screw same thing with this one okay now get this in here Well, let's go see if this baby works. I thought that this would light with the spark of that lighter, but I was wrong. Actually, I had to get the little propane torch out, and I think it's because I don't have it choked at the rear. That's a 
horrible background to see the flame, so here's a different shot. My little furnace there, foundry that is, has fallen apart, so I need to make a new one. In this little baggie, you can see black copper and other copper. Well, the black stuff I tried to melt, and I just couldn't get it to melt. So I didn't even know if it was copper or not. So I kept it anyway, and now we're going to try to see if we can melt it with this little burner. <laughs> Guys, this thing is insanely hot. It's the hottest that this furnace has ever gotten. And I can see the copper melting. I've never had this happen with the aluminum before, but I don't know if it's the temperature of the copper or copper or whatever, but this little thing that I poured tons of aluminum in, I've never had a problem. But as soon as I poured that copper into it, there was a little explosion there. So I guess the best thing I hear people say you have to do is to make sure you heat your molds before you pour your metal into it. Well, now that I know it melts copper, I'm going to take some of the cop, uh, the aluminum that is that I previously melted and there's a lot of porosity into it and now I'm just going to see if there's a reason why it was porous and I got some more cans that I'll melt with it so I start off with the a base of aluminum from the previous melt and now I'm just taking the rest of the cans and melting them up. Guys, if you look real closely at the bottom of my crucible on the left hand side there, there's a breach starting, starting that is, and I didn't know it at the time. Still don't know it at this time, but yeah, see, there's aluminum that has made a little plug down there. That's going to come into play here in a moment. Fortunately for me, the crucible is still holding up. Got a full old ladle of aluminum that I'm going to get to pour some ingots out of, but uh, it's slowly failing. One of the things I do is keep the shavings from my turning on the lathe and all the cuttings from my aluminum, and I put those in, wrap them in aluminum foil, remelt it all down. Nothing gets wasted. And then disaster struck. I saw the crucible not filling with aluminum and all of a sudden I hear a little explosion and that's where you can see on the bottom there where it poured out from the bottom of the foundry and um, onto the concrete driveway and there's a little explosion. I you didn't see it, it was off camera where I ran and pulled the, the propane away, turned the furnace off and now I'm just trying to come to grips with what just happened to my crucible. There's a nice little puddle of aluminum that exploded and well you can see there's going to be a little divot left in my concrete because of it. There it is. It blew that little piece off of there. Alright, here's the aftermath. Uh, wow, look at scale that came off of that. Um, I don't know where the breach was in it yet. I'll have to do that a little later. But wow, this was crazy amount of scale on it. All right, and uh, so what I'm going to do is put this in a furnace and the foundry that is, melt that off of there, and we got this that spilled out. And let's see what's down in the, in the forge, furnace that is. All right, and then we got a lot of 
can down in there. Alrighty, so hopefully I'll clean this up and remelt this. And also clean this up and remelt that. So. so after I find the breach in the crucible, I go ahead and cut that off. And now I'm gonna prep it to weld it and uh, reuse it. This, by the way, is a bad idea, guys. I have no idea what this is made out of. It's just a some pipe that my brother-in-law got me, but it's, it's insanely hard. On the outside, I'm just trying to wait, make a weld bevel, and on the inside, I'm just trying to get the aluminum back out of the way so it doesn't uh, mess with the weld. So here I got the crucible re-welded and now I'm taking some of that aluminum that I already melted and it is so porous that I'm going to try to use charcoal again because when I used charcoal I didn't have the porosity. Here's my re-melted stock. Um, there's a little copper ingot in here too but I got uh, three copper balls. But this stuff was so porous I went and did it with charcoal and sure enough no porosity not sure what that's off the lathe i lathed it and um, i'm thinking it might be temperature so i got all oh, that's good aluminum right there so i'm ready to use that but uh got to rebuild the forge rebuild the burner and i think we're going to be a copper melting machine well guys when i had talked about using this again would be a bad idea here's a reason this breached here in a couple spots down here and i thought just because it's low down on there that's where it is so i just cut this off redressed it welded it to that piece and the problem is is at least i was paying attention this time there's starting to be a breach right here and another one right here so somehow down in here it um, had some weak spots and uh, anyway that was that was bad to to reuse this so I know I can only get so many melts out of it because I hear that aluminum is corrosive to steel but I got this one ready I'm gonna weld another flat piece on that get some bolts in there to do it and I'll get some, at least some good uh, um, at least a few good melts out of it before it breaches, but I'll be watching for the breaches. And also, guys, I wanted to be so organized and tell you exactly a laundry list and how much it costs, but unfortunately, I threw the bags away. But I can tell you this much. on um, One of the things you're going to need is something I hear guys say at least 20 PSI. So I went with a 30 PSI thing off of eBay. It really wasn't that uh, expensive to have a 30 PSI with a barbecue type of uh, propane connector. And it comes down here to a, a flare fitting, I think it is. So initially I bought two of these of different sizes because I thought I could go from on this side and on this side, but, but you couldn't go into here. So I bought this adapter. It's 3 8 to 3 8 uh, One is uh, National Pipe Thread. And the other one is, they call it MIP, but it's like a flare fitting. I don't know what that MIP is. Also, I got this ball uh, 3 8 uh, quarter turn. And I forget how much this cost. But guys, altogether, everything I bought to make this was right around 20 25 bucks at Lowe's. Um, I got this little 3 8 inch thing uh, with a, as you saw on the thing, a... Uh, uh, a cap on it and the cap used I, I drilled it and tapped it to use MIG wire fittings and uh, that's how that is down there uh, the, like I said there are some guys that put these in straight and some guys that put them in the side I might experiment with that um, this is a 8 inch 3 quarters and just a little NPT National Pipe Thread and 
the one that I had in the initial kiln, it disintegrated and it was exactly like that one, which is um, three quarter to one and a half. And uh, actually the way it's listed though, when you go into the stores, one and a half to three quarter reducer. Um, I couldn't find one except for galvanized. And so what I may do is drill and tap this one, put it down here and put this one on this side. Because the other one, I thought it was one and a quarter, but it's actually one and a half. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to make a big difference, but I know that the one and a half will work. But here's the one and a quarter on there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it costs right around 20, 25 bucks. And um, I hope to do some more melting. I love melting copper. That was the thing I wanted to do. So with that, now I can make, um, I can melt brass and bronze, make some uh, bronze type of stuff. Aluminum bronze is what I'd like to make. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you next time.